Hi guys, and welcome to So Much Therapy. I'm here with our fave, one of our very favorites, and our very <laughs> own, Lisa Gifford. And so we are excited to launch um, the So Much Therapy, and you can see this quilt behind us that Lisa made. And so today we are talking about how things are created and the process in which it takes. So I'm going to ask Lisa a bunch of questions, and she's gonna kind of give you a behind the scenes, how she does things, how they work, and so I didn't tell her we were going to do this, but what I wanted to start off with, and we'll get a few like, minutes for oh people no. to get in. <laughs> we'll give a few minutes for people to get in. So um, we'll talk about um, Linda. Linda is sitting over here, and she's going to be moderating for us. So if you have any questions, feel free to make sure you're texting and you're asking, uh, asking questions, because I want it to be an interactive. Yeah. You know, we've got sewing machines coming up with Alba. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the 28th of August. Um, look on your 29th. calendar mm -hmm. because on your calendar it's going to show you the dates and what the episode is about. So if you have questions about your Janome machine and you'd like to ask and you haven't been able to get an answer, she's been with Janome for over 20 years. So I'm sure if she doesn't have the answer, she can get it for you. So be ready with those questions. Look at your calendar. Kind of get an idea of <clears throat> what we'll be talking about on those episodes, as you can see right there. <clears throat> and for those of you who can't find it, a lot of times when you go there and we're live, it will take you right to us if it's an easier way for you to find it. So there you go. So instead of getting on Facebook and having to scroll any date or time that this is going to come up, just go to the website and you'll be able to click it and watch it. So today is, is creating is a process. So if mm -hmm. you have questions about how you create things, um, feel free to ask a question and Linda's, Linda is going to be gracious enough to let us know. And, she better be nice because the seats are going to be revolt, reversed here in a couple weeks and Lisa's going to be back there and Linda's going to be sitting with us. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Val, Carol said that she hopes you're feeling better. I am. It was a long weekend and any of you who were in the retreat, I had a blast. It was so much fun. I feel really bad the last day. I didn't get to go have the last dinner, <laughs> the last supper, because I was feeling kind of rough, but um, I'm feeling a little bit better today and a little bit better each day. It's, um, we live in the middle of nowhere. And I'm starting to see a lot of new things growing out there that I haven't seen in years past. I think Hurricane Sally grew some new kinds of vegetation out there because um, I think the allergy season, my whole family has been really fighting it. So yeah. hopefully um, you guys had a good time with the retreat and we're glad to be back. And with that, Lisa, if Z could, I pick some pictures that off my phone, now Lisa and I we always chat and we always talk and she sends me pictures of different things. So I wanted to put a bunch of random pictures up there and I wanted Lisa to go ahead and explain these pictures, what they were, what she was thinking at the time. Um, and I threw quite a few different ones in there. So I'm gonna let you take it over, Lisa. I don't know that picture. What, are, what am I looking at? This oh, was Oh, these were when you were doing <clears throat> all of the, um, these were the military where everybody brought in, had, had a whole bunch of, uh, they had brought in a whole bunch of blocks. Yeah, these were all mailed these, in this was for the, the most yeah, part. These were the veterans, uh, veterans blocks. And, and so, for police officers, they yeah, were for the police, police officers. officers yeah. and veterans, for fallen police officers, we had people send in and donate different blocks that were the yeah. patriotic. And sashed them. And, and that one right there deal. was the Dallas police officers, the five Dallas police oh, officers right. that passed away. Yeah. Um, we did a memorial quilt for the department itself. And yeah. Lisa helped, and there was a lot of customers that came in and, and helped as well. Oh my gosh, we my had sister so many blocks that came in and it, uh, we were just overwhelmed with the, the outpouring that we had So Lisa, my sister-in-law, once we got the blocks, they helped bind them, put them all together, mm -hmm. and there you go, there's my sister-in-law, Lynn. She did people, all the <laughs> People sent in police patches, and all you know, I'm a police officer too, so this is kind of my heart. So these patches were given to the families of the fallen officers. Um, my sister quilted those. So we got patches from all over the world, I Australia. Mean, it, was it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that was a special time for me, and all these quilts have gone to fallen officers. So Lisa was a big part in helping us. You might need to do that one again. It's been a few years. <clears throat> so that was that one was a lot of fun. Absolutely was a lot of fun. So that, it was a lot of work, but I, I guess I was just amazed at how many had come in for that. It was just so many. It we was heartwarming so, for sure. I, I don't even know the number of quilts that we were able to do. I, I want to say, Linda, do you remember? I want to say there was 10, 15. More than that. Yeah, we had a lot so more than we ever expected. Yeah, so we, had, we did one for locally. We had a police officer who died with a brain tumor and yeah. it was very, very sad. And Lynn, Lisa and I were able to go actually to the police department and yeah. um, 
Give it to him. Give it to him. Yeah, and he yeah. passed away about a year later. It was very, very sad. So his family has that quilt. And hopefully it gives him a little bit of peace yeah. and some for the children as well. All so. his, all of his uh, everybody on his group had signed a block. And it was really good. It was really good. It was and we donated a quilt it. to the Comic-Con here that they raffled oh off. Oh, my goodness. They raffled <laughs> yeah, the quilt yeah. off for him. And he and his family won a week's paid vacation to Disney World. Mm -hmm. Top notch. Um, somebody just said, I'll pay for everything, anything that they want. And um, it was a Captain Kirk signed It was amazing. Quilt, and <laughs> it, it was, was pretty Captain amazing. Kurt, it was a big, huge panel. It was amazing. I think I might actually have a picture of that somewhere. If I can scrounge it up, I'll try and bring it to <laughs> yeah, the... So while our live is, if Zeke yeah. can find that. You'll find it. But, I mean, it meant a lot to that family. You know, he's mm -hmm. gone now, and he's been passed away for probably a year now. But, I mean, to that family, that quilt is always going to be with them it's, it's always, always going to be, be with, with them. them with the kids that yep. was the whole whole point of it and the whole purpose. police department all his fellow officers signed the block so that quilt was signed by all his um everybody everybody brothers in blue. In his, that was in his group in his office the place where he worked every every single one had signed a block and it was amazing all right yeah. zeke and do we have he, any more he's looking, he's all right, looking. there you go lisa what are we looking at here okay is this when we were testing the um, the seam press? The seam press. You are so excited. You text me this so picture, excited. and you're like, "Look, Valerie, look. And this is like, me pressing it with the ordinary ones, and look how flat the one is." <laughs> and that was with our seam press that yeah. you had asked us to make. Yeah. You said, "Valerie, I need something heavy. Valerie, I need it." So, what was your thought process in when you were relaying to me what? And I know Linda was a part of that, so you can tell that backstory. Well, my biggest thing was I've. Sometimes you press a block and then you don't always get to it right away. I mean, it's a little bit of time ago. We live in Florida. It's very humid. Uh, sometimes things don't always stay just as flat and crisp as you want it to be. So then if it doesn't stay nice and flat and then you go to sew it, sometimes that piece of fabric of that seam will flip back up on you. And then if you really wanted to keep it nice and flat, then you have to pick it out. So... Linda, it came from you because it started with a project that I was doing and um, she had given me the most, and it was a Christmas present, which I, I still dearly love it. She had made me a tailor's press. Now, if you know a tailor's press, it's big. It's got lots of opponents to it, not just for just pressing, but it's for pressing curves and pressing sleeves and pressing neck collars and cuffs. I mean, it's got all these little areas that you could, it's a big piece, it's heavy and I love it. And I was using that, but it's, it's a lot to pick up and pick up and pick up. And so I was thinking, why couldn't we, we got this amazing get a grip that reflects heat. And, and we've got, I knew that we could come up with something. And, but Linda was the one that had got, you know, Creating it's, is a process. It's to, it's a something that sparks and it just burns and then you've got to get it out. Well, and it really started because Philip was looking at making yep. some things for me yep. to use. And so I showed him the tailor's press. I, I showed him a bunch of seam presses and he said, hey, I could make these and sell these. And I said, nobody would pay you enough to make it worth your it's while. It's elaborate. It's, it's like a piece it's, of art. It's And it's a lot, even mm -hmm. just the regular ones. They're oh, too yeah. much yeah. work. Yeah. And you find them, the knockoffs, really cheap, but they're not quality wood. And we're yeah. not all lucky so, enough to have a, a Philip. <laughs> A Philip around, <laughs> but we're going to show you a little bit of Philip's work when we yeah. uh, oh, talk no. to Linda in her segment, and yeah. uh, we'll show you a little bit about oh, God. that. We're so in this trouble. is how this came out. I told her what I wanted, and she whipped out a big one. <laughs> it was just too big, so we got it. I think this one is what eight it inches. It took us it's a couple minutes yeah, because couple again, minutes. Hmm? I think it's ten inches. 10 inches because I think again we start off a little bigger and then we had to get it smaller and you know getting it this is too big it's too heavy I mean it mm -hmm. took us two or three tries before mm -hmm. we and it had to be a little bit thicker than our normal had to be so thicker it, it took had us to a little bit mm -hmm. but I remember when you sent me that picture you were so excited you were I like was... when you get to the office you got to make me a sample and and <laughs> and as you can see in that picture see I the quilting using... paddles mm -hmm. she was using the quilting paddles at the time she didn't have this available we hadn't made this yet so she was using the quilting paddles, which are only a half inch, I believe. Yeah, a half inch and not quite as heavy, so I'm doubling them up. <laughs> to put some weight on it. She was so, so, yeah, no was, pun intended, I, she was so excited I was, about I was. it. 
So that kind of was the beginning of this. And I, again, I just went through my text messages and I just pulled off some of the pictures. And I've always said in her this stuff. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't sure what that one was, but this is the kind of thing that you and I go back and forth with. And I, that was I in I think my... that was my first shape for the, the same press, but you know, of course, this is better. This, yeah, yeah I think that was, was that your first, first idea. idea when of, that's a tra a that's the shape of a traditional seam yeah, press. Yeah, that's a tra shape and maybe of that's a where it came from. So she, yeah. we send pictures back and forth, and we speak a different language, yeah. and then we come in at work on Monday, and then we're half the stuff we talked about on the weekend we forget, yeah. and we're on to something new. It it just I think when you create, it's hard to keep creating like mm -hmm. focused on one thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, Zeke, go ahead and. Oh, okay. So this is when I'm making thousands and thousands of masks. And I think this is when you first handed me the 3D mask. And I think those are my first samples of it. And that was showing, the other one is showing the, um, where we and were. And I wish I was yeah, prepared. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think I was just showing you the very first samples of making the 3D mask and my very first sample of, well, some of the earlier ones of the, um, Pleated the, pleat, the, the pleated mask. The pleated mask and showing how I just surge in the edges. And Shane of. is on vacation today, or I would have pulled. There was a lady that mm -hmm. had requested this special template be made mm -hmm. and the design for this template. And it's, the, it's, not, a, it's not a hexagon, Linda. What is it? It's a for long, this face it's mask. It's a long hexi. I don't know. I, it's I a long hexagon. So there was a customer who requested it, and I said to her, do you mind if we use this? And she said, no, absolutely not. So again, creating is a, Lisa took the template, and she, she, made, she changed it. She made it her own. Mm -hmm. But the idea itself was great. But again, you expanded on that. You made it different. Yeah, I didn't you, have any instructions. You just handed me the template. <laughs> and so I kind of had to figure out how to put it all together, you know, and make it so it was quick and easy and seamless. That was and important. And if I'm not mistaken, but that, Zeke, we were on a um, YouTube, and I think that had, back then, I can't tell you how many hits that had. That is one of our all-time biggest hits, Z Zeke, the making Zeke of these masks. I'll go, look, I'll go look while Zeke, we're talking. Zeke, Zeke knows. I actually brought the, the 3D mask here. So I got... Oh, there you go. That's a couple of them. This is just... Because, you know, it started off, we only had three sizes. Then four. I think we got, like, five sizes now. So... And then customers... And here's a couple of them. What about the oven mitts? Then um, there was another yep. customer, and I wish I had these names, and I would love to give you guys the credit for it. Last I checked, I think we were just under the 450,000 views threshold. I think 453. 453,000 oh, okay. was the last views on I that. had looked. And she had done a video. 454,000. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Another thousand. <laughs> yeah. It just... But to think she amazing. touched that many lives, and that's, mm -hmm. that's how many people she helped make these face masks, which kept the, the fabric. What was so great about these is it kept the fabric off of your yeah, mouth. Yeah, it takes the fabric off. It, it just... This little seam, <clears throat> this little piece right here pushes that fabric out so it's not up against your face so and I like how it just stayed nestled on the side of your face and it just gave you really good protection and then I I tweak uh, talked about how I preferred having a more of a batik fabric as a lining versus uh, just two quilting cottons I like to have an, a batik quilting cotton because it has a little bit of a denser weave to it so it just Unexpectedly, what our videos, you know, might get a couple hundred views, maybe a couple thousand, but that one just was getting three, four, at the heat of it, it seemed like we were getting three to four thousand views a day. It was just, it was just crazy. And then people were emailing at me and asking questions and I would just respond back. So it was really, it was really good. So just a simple, and it just, I just have a couple of them up here because, you know, don't have that many. Seems we make them and we give, we give them away. One. And from that, a customer had emailed or had got on the Facebook group and had mentioned, "Hey, I can make oven mitts." Yeah. And so Miss Marie Powers came up and she made her own design. But there's three or four different designs and ways. But that same face mask pattern made now oven mitts. So when you're talking about creating, I think quilters have very creative minds, yeah. and they don't see. And I think that's one of the things about you that I admire. My grandmother, Linda. I can give you a template and you don't see a hexagon, you see 50 million things. Other things you, can do. you might see an animal. I mean, I, there's been how many times I've shown you a template and, and we'll go to the paisley. Yeah. I see <laughs> a bird. Paisley. I see a, you know, it's, you see I so see much rabbit. different. I see, <laughs> I see wings of a butterfly. <laughs> I, mean, mm -hmm. I see so many different things. And I think in one of those pictures template. that Zeke has, I think we're going to get to that yeah. and then we'll talk about that as well. So. Yep. So, you know, Marie just did this simple thing, but, you know, it's also the perfect mug rug size. So not just an oven mitt, an, a, a mug rug, you know, make this, decorate this up all pretty, put our, 
Put your mugs on there. We were going to have our coffee mugs up here, but we got our waters instead. <laughs> Midday. So what about this one? And okay, I think this came so through a couple changes, and this kind this, of brings me you know, to the... I could go grab that. Linda, it? in one of those drawers is all the templates, all the prototypes, everything that I have made, because... All right, this so is I, for David. Yeah, now this, this is David. And she's still working on it, so don't get too excited about it. It's, David it's will coming. launch it when it's ready. There are so... Okay, so... David sent me. Keep going. Keep talking. So David will do this, but this is just shows you the process. Things change so many times and she sees something and she changes it. And it's not quick. And sometimes we'd like to say, Lisa, will you hurry up? Lisa, will you hurry up? Sent me that. But honestly, it takes three or four changes in the way that things come to design and work There's with. So everything I do, I usually have a ton of prototypes before I actually get to the final the final version that I like, this is what he'd sent me or something similar to that. Um, but it was, a, it's a need. Somebody had a need of what they wanted. And so I'm trying to That's take good. that need and make it professional, make it, make it better. So I get so many different, so we had this, this was not workable. This is dead in the water. Not, not Tell something I can work with it. I could not find an easy way to get this hole to work and. I had, and and this one but the thing I didn't like about it was I saw this as a major fire hazard if I had my cube right here like the block the power block I just saw this slipping down between the wall and the power block and hitting the prongs and I thought that's a fire hazard so I never was a fan of this design this design here so we changed the design and that's that picture I think is of this one where now I just made it more like a pocket for a door handle. Yeah, for a door handle. But then we also created, I've got this other template here where now it's got the grommet in it and it's your cell phone holder and the, 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 the little power cube fits through here. And again, so. this is a, a David project that she's working on mm -hmm. and it's, it's just about there and ready to go. So Dave will be launching. But that, that showed you yeah, one that's in progress. I wanted to show you one that we were currently working on to see mm -hmm. the different the different levels that these go through and the different things that have to be done for it to come to yeah. fruition or to have that final project. Lots of, lots of different, I make lots of different prototypes until I find one that I feel is right. I want to get the measurements right. I want to get the, I want it all to fit so that when I make one, that it, you know, then you are make it, able to make the exact same thing. I'm not tweaking it or changing it. I want it to be done that way. And I also try to pay attention to what kind of machine I'm working on because not everybody has an M7. So I'm trying to pay attention to what kind of and machine you have. And that's a good point because you, you use a lot of foam. We're talking mm -hmm. about the tasket basket. Yeah. So, you know, you are limited by your machines at some point. Yeah. So that's a good thing that, you know, you need to at home when you're creating be yeah. thinking of because you definitely don't want to ruin your only machine if it's not capable of doing that heavy. Yeah, I keep, I think about those things. I think about the quarter inch seam. I could use a specialty foot on there that has, you know, an HP foot that just, but not everybody has the HP foot. So I pretty much always stay with the same machine and just set my same foot. And so I've set my needle at, at what a quarter inch is because most of you can do that. Not everybody has the specialty feet. So I try to keep everything as simple and as basic because that's what I'm trying to think of. If I was brand new to sewing and I didn't have all the bells and whistles, I would want it to be something that I could easily work on my machine with. All right, what well, so we, we got next? Got, we got a couple comments. Mary said, I like the grommet idea as it'll keep it from slipping down between the yes, plug and the outlet that was easily, the whole of purpose. course, yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, Jeannie said she loves this new segment, Jean or Jeanne or Jeannie, I'm not sure which. And then Sheila has a question. Does Lisa have a favorite template or design that she's helped develop? Well, well, we're definitely going to get there. That we're, we're going to get there. So hang on, and she'll let you know. Let's get through these pictures. There, there's we'll the go. Paisleys. Yes. So why don't you go ahead? Because there's a lot going on okay. in this picture that people may not see. Okay. Cause see, all right. So this is probably like the third, maybe the third or fourth thing that I made uh, for you. Because, um, and again, it was just you. Had, at this one, you had handed me the umbrella templates. You had designed it, and you had handed me the flower templates. Nothing had been made with them. You just handed me some templates. Mm -hmm. And said, okay, go make something with these. So I thought, well, this would be really cute to make a really cool springy you know, now, project. Now, mind you, so. that's like me putting, and I wish I brought the templates up here, mm -hmm. a heart template, a square, a triangle, and a pot, and just saying, here. How do you get from those seven templates? And when you walked out of here, you said, 
I already have it in my mind. Mm -hmm. How do you go from seven to, how did you see the bird feeder? How did you see the bees with the hearts? I mean, to me, hearts doesn't scream butterfly. I, I mean, I, <laughs> how, I how do you I get to that I process? don't know. You, you handed me the flower pots, which is the three <laughs> sizes of flowers and the pots, and you handed me the three sizes of the umbrellas. That's all you handed me. Mm -hmm. So I walked out the door seeing a, I saw a whole spring garden and, and, I, and, and then I saw, oh, I'm going to make these birds carry umbrellas. I'm going to, I'm, I, I, our basic squares, our triangles, there's my birdhouse. And then I thought, well, the bees, oh, that's, that's hard. So I just play with the templates. I look at a template and I see so many other things I could do with it. If you look at the butterfly, so you see, you can easily see, all right, there's the two hearts for the butterfly. But the bottom. Now, I don't want to interrupt, but on the B, is uh -huh. that embroidery? Because it's not close, I don't have it in front of me. Was that embroidery? On uh, the. On the yeah, no, there, that, on that the is actually. Um, did you embroider the antennas or was that. Do you remember no, what you No, I did? just little strips of fabric. I just. Strips. That was applique. That's all little strips of fabric. I just did two little strips of fabric. I applique them down, the circle applique. I did a yellow oval and then I just cut out little strips of fabric and applique them down. And, and this uh, is when you were first yeah, back when we yeah, first yeah. met and I wanted to see what you could do with templates. And so that was just me handing you templates and just saying, and you put as much onto one panel as you can. And that's, that's gotta be <laughs> yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. So that was, that was there. Okay. So this right here is a work in progress. Uh, I saw something, you know, a lot of times I get my ideas off Pinterest, like, just like the rest of you, or I will see something and I thought, how could I make that a Martelli? How could I change? How could I, you know, I'm always looking for things. Well, I kept seeing these Japanese knot bags and I think they're really, really cute. And uh, I was telling Amanda about it, my daughter, Amanda, and she's got a friend and he, he's just a really cool guy. Uh, he's older. Um, his name is Billy. Let me tell you, Billy is a hippie hippie. I mean, he is so 70s. I mean, he's a true 70s child. And um, he wants a knot bag. He just thinks it would be the coolest thing to have a knot bag that he can Did you bring one? put his cigarettes in, his lighter, his sunglasses, his wallet, just whatever. He just thought a knot, knot bag would be the coolest thing. So that is a template that's a process. I start off. By, I have this huge roll of butcher paper that you can get at Sam's that's for like 20 bucks, this huge thing. I usually tear off a piece of that. I draw out my design on that, get it to where I like it, real smooth. And then I got this amazing plastic. Now Valerie's been trying to find this stuff. <laughs> I get this at Dollar Tree. This is, this is Linda's favorite place. Two sheets for a dollar. They become my templates. Poor Shane and Zeke, they have to take these. They have to make photocopies of these. Then uh, Zeke usually takes the pictures, sends it down to Shane, who has to smooth out my hand-drawn pieces because they're not always the same on both sides. So he's got to get it all smoothed out and perfect before I act. And then once that is done, gets the size and dimensions right, then I get a, a first template cut and then I work from a real template. This one hasn't even really in no the works yet. because we're getting David's out first and then this will be, this is, this will this be on is its next. way. But this is a knot bag. I mean, you've seen them. I mean, it's just the simplest little thing that you could do it in any sizes. This is just probably a, a, little, a little big, but here's what I was trying to do one that would be more guy, <laughs> you know, but I think I would want it to be a little bit smaller, but um, I, Brooke, you're gonna kill me. Um, her husband, Paul, you know, I love Paula Brooke. They live in upstate New York. He's the only guy I ever knew that carried a man purse. Everywhere he went, he had a man purse. So guys have purses, guys have bags. They do. So this would be a great little, you know, something simple that you could just throw whatever you whatnot in and go out the door. It was with. Harley fabric. <laughs> Put it on I their bike. Some Harley fabric, yep. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot of. Bo well, you know, I got that flames. I got some flame fabric, so I might could do something <laughs> with it. But this is where it goes. It was, I actually had a paper drawn. Then I lay my plastic on top because this was bigger. And as you can see here, I even when it's not wide enough, she's got it taped. She cuts out that <laughs> little extra piece. I mean, so yep. it's, a, it's, it, it's, it's a, definitely, it's a process. It's Zeke, not easy. Zeke's got to take, he's got to, you know, this is very early. I mean, this is just, this just started, but I was able to make these two from cutting from this. So knowing that when Shane gets this, he's gonna get all this smoothed out. It's gonna be the same. As a matter of fact, I don't even think it's gonna be a template like this. 
I think it's going to be. Now let me ask you this. Yeah, when you make these templates, mm -hmm. uh, here's a question for you. Do you make your quarter inch seam allowance built in or do you wait for Shane to put your quarter inch in? No, usually I already have the quarter inch already built so in. So when you're making your mm -hmm. template, you yeah, already have it. It's already have done. It. Yeah, it's already done. And I'm, one of the things I look at when I'm designing or creating a project for, you know, for us, I also think about our rotary cutters. I think about trying to save on plastic so it doesn't have so much waste so we can put things <coughs> on the fold. So this was the original design. What I think we're going to do, though, I would rather have it where this is placed on the fold so that's going to save as plastic. Then you have little marks so you could have yep. your So different I'll have marks. the large size and then in my instructions I'll have a mark on, I'll put a mark on the template so that you go, know, okay, this would be the cutoff for the short side. So it's going to save on plastic. And um, then another thing I think of, well, a rotary cutter wouldn't do very good going through this big curve right here. But if I have it half, then that's a whole lot easier to cut out with our rotary cutters. This little angle right here is not an easy angle to cut out with a rotary cutter. But if I get my cut lines in here, here, and here, now I can easily cut that out. So I'm always thinking about, and it's your fault, because <laughs> she told me from the beginning no matter what I do, every single thing I do, no matter what it is, only a Martelli product can touch it. And it's a process so, because mm -hmm. Floyd downstairs, he's been with us for 15 years yep. and Floyd's a little bit older than I am. Yep. He sits there and he cuts this brown material eight hours a day, Yeah, eight hours a day. I and he uses that. our rotary cutter. Mm -hmm. So if Floyd has to stop and he can't use a rotary cutter to cut that design to out, the brown on. now you're taking so much time for him to get an X-Acto knife and people don't understand that, oh, I want this design, but it's not it's worth Floyd's time. Work. Yeah. It's not ergonomic, and that's that's maybe another segment, but I mean, it's not ergonomic for him. I mean, there's a lot that goes, like your process is your process. My process is your process, his process. Yeah, but I think about You know, this. how much are we gonna charge? I think about it. So my process is much larger because it starts with your idea, which then goes to how much is that gonna cost us? How much time do we put in it? Yeah. And so when I come up with a price, it also depends, and some people may say, well, there's this much plastic in this one and this much plastic in that. Well, if we have to hand cut it or if it if it takes an odd size bag or if the shipping is a lot more expensive, I mean, oh, yeah. again, my whole thing is yeah. a process as well. So it, there's a process for everything, not just yeah. your part. But I try to think about that. I try to think about <coughs> Floyd, Floyd and Everett back there cutting, and I don't want them to have to pull out something special just to trim these up. I think about that. I think about... Um, the laser and what it has to do, particularly in getting those cut lines in there, or if we have to have any engraving on it, I think about that process. You need to know this yep. side is the fold. What yep. if you don't do that? Yep. You know? So I, I'm always trying to think ahead of how all these can be done. So Now this is a project we don't have yet, but <laughs> I told you, I just went through my phone and I had gotten some pictures that we had been sending back and forth that to. Box. That's, that's, a, that's another one. <laughs> right, okay, so Zeke actually, he's handed. <laughs> this is the very first prototype, the very first one. And I, he's cute, but I think the legs are a little short, body's a little squatty. And, and if you go into the bucket, I actually got, no, it, out there, there's okay. another in the drawer, drawer. So he's evolving. He's still evolving. But he might be the perfect size for uh, the thread caddy. So, my first thought was these are just cute little little frogs, but Valerie said, well, why can't we, you know, attach a thread caddy? It can be attached to his little legs, so we're going to have a long tongue hanging out. Think about a tongue caddy. holding it, or yeah. he can have it with both hands. <laughs> yep, yeah. so this is, this is something that's still in, um, matter of fact, I've actually gone beyond the plastic. I'm not sure. It's in one of the, okay. What am I looking for? We've gone, uh, the templates oh. and uh, the prototypes, so we've gone beyond the plastic, the drawing, and the plastic phase, we've actually gotten my first set sample of, plastic of sample, you mm -hmm. know, of, of, of the template, and so I've already had to retweak it. So we're, we're retweaking it, and now we're thinking about different sizes that that you'd want them to be. So, you know, just in different ways it can be done. This one, and is I mean, you know, you look this at this one one's very plain. Edge. Her first one is it going to work? To look how cute this is with the, I mean, the eyes. And then the fabric that you can see that she's quilted. So this is one fabric. Yeah. See here where she's quilted and sewn just a different design and blocks. And now it's got a different design yeah. to it as well. So this one's blocks, just sewed blocks and then quilted it and then cut it out. And so it's all raw edge. The picture that Zeke is showing you where it's just jelly roll strips sewed together. 
and then cut out and then sewed it together. So you're not even dealing with stitching and flipping. You're actually sewing along the edges. So you're seeing all of your raw, raw no worry about it, no, or all of your raw edges. So this is, this is coming. This is just not, he's, he's not there yet. I, I could see so. a big one on a little girl's bed, little boy's bed. How cute would that be? Yeah. Now, what yep. did you fill it with? Because I know these have this stuff This one's in with them. poly beads. Um, but uh, Laura, who we just saw this in Smithson and I already, because these are just hot glued on. Laura uh, Crow, that yeah, was here? Yeah, she, was there. she said she thinks these would be great filled with rice, and they could be um, hot or cold. So that's that's another use for them, that you could do whatever you want with them. So, again, and this And Ms. Crow brought just, up a cute bags, and we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about, and she designed. Mm -hmm. So we were just talking about that while she was up here for the retreat. Okay, so yep. what's this one here? Okay, so again, this is, we didn't have a sunflower template or a sunflower um, project. This was me looking at the paisleys. And there was three different sized paisleys. There's a small, medium, large, and I saw a sunflower with them. So using our circle templates and the paisley templates, and then the heart template to me, that is my sunflower leaf. This was like the first little wall hanging that I had made using all Martelli templates and just showing, you know, it looked like a sunflower to me. Like I said, the verse, the, the paisleys is probably the one of those yeah, versatile about templates. Buying panels and mm -hmm. stuff. And then like you did that class where we did the borders around the panels. Yeah. How cool is something like this when you see the templates or that you bought from us that you can see those things that you could do a centerpiece for your quilt and put the blocks around it, a, mm -hmm. a 10 inch block all the way around it or whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. But I mean, again, these are the heart templates that she used. And I've showed how you could use that same sunflower. You could make a mug rug or you could make a, you know, like a hot pad or a centerpiece to the table because it's big or pillows. We've made so many different things with just that sunflower template. Yep. Mm -hmm. What is this? Oh, this was Houston. Yeah. What's That's, the back? That is uh, Gail's. That is Burke's, Burke's Beauty. Beauty. This was a big competition that we had. This is the one that introduced us to G and Sherry. That's right. This one right here. This uh -huh. is where we had sent out the template. Well, we had requested uh, testers lots and lots of testers i mean we had hundreds of people that had it's, they had to submit their kind of like a, a resume per se of quilts that they've done photos and things and we chose um i think 15 or 20 was it 15 i think it was 15. 20. we, we took 20. those panels to houston and we, we had a contest i don't remember who won but if the important either. thing about this picture and the reason i put this picture in there is look at all of those Every panels. single one. Every single different. one of those is different, but those are all identically the same block. Everybody had the same amount same of fabric. Block. I think they had, you know, two yards of all different, all the different fabrics, and they all came. They had a deadline. You know, they couldn't just get the we fabric. We gave them so three fabrics. Had to get it back. The mm -hmm. same block. Yeah. And all those designs were done differently from. It was freaking amazing. From and that we one did block. that with the uh, Gail's other one, uh, yeah. her Gail's mm -hmm. Waltz. So yeah. we need to get back to that because that was. A lot Absolutely of fun. Absolutely a lot of fun. Yep. Oh, this one was great. So this was, uh, this is the cake box quilt. And um, now some of you out yeah, there may great. recognize some of these blocks. I know yep, Greg yep. did the little dog. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there's a lot of you out there. You may notice one of your blocks, but this was one that we started. It was a, um, the cake boss. We went yep. to um, Paducah and we sponsored the cake and they made a cake and I was talking to inspired. his brother-in-law. <laughs> yep. I was talking to his brother-in-law and I said, you know, making cakes and quilting are very, very similar. One, you have to have talent. Two, you have to have a vision. And three, you have to be artistic. I'm not saying that you can't sew if you're not, but you will never be a Lisa or a Linda or a Graham unless you have that creative juice flowing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so this just shows you, these were different customers that sent in blocks and all we told them was red, black, and white. Red, black, and white. It had to be cake well, oriented. And, and these are inches. all the different designs mm -hmm. and about a dog because he loved his dog. Mm -hmm. So I told him, he said, I've never had a quilt. So I said to him, I said, I tell you what, everybody needs a quilt and I'll make you one. He gave me his cell phone number. And so we went back and they put a nice video. If you go back on Facebook and you'll see it. Mm -hmm. But we had all these different blocks in. So I'll let you talk a little bit about what you did when we got the blocks in. So we got all these blocks <clears throat> in, quite a few, because uh, there's more that you don't see here because we, we had enough that we could actually We did make, one for the dog. We did one for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Biscotti. So uh -huh. um, all of them had the same color theme. All of them had, you know, whether they were about the dog or about cake. And, you know, of course, we also had the photo blocks. And I wanted to have some, something to tie it all together so that it would make it all look good and make each block look like it was 
the focal. Like it was coming out. I wanted the block to stand out. I didn't want the blocks to get lost in the background. So And that made the quilt. Yeah, that's yeah. why the shadow boxing was the best way to do it by using the grays and the blacks. And it wasn't that hard to do. It just I wanted to get the right gray and the and right. And again, that's so creating because we could have just sewn these blocks together, mm -hmm. but I, it would not have been even remotely. I mean, it wouldn't have been the quilt without Lisa doing that shadow boxing, yeah, and it, it took it a little like bit of work. It looks like they're coming out of the quilt. It just. But how did you see that? I, I I just knew I wanted something like that, and I just had to figure it out. I wanted the blocks to stand out, and that's. That was the best way to do it, was doing the shadow. I remember when I went to the, to the store, Valerie, I just bought five yards of, the, <laughs> of this fabric. Okay, whatever you need. And I didn't, in, I didn't include in the pictures, which I wish I had, because we could go on for hours with the things that you've created, but we did one for the Ronald McDonald House as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. And we brought blocks down to the Ronald McDonald House and had all the families sign them, and the children mm -hmm. that came through there for, I think it was a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we got all those notes, and you made blocks out of those notes Every in single that one. one. And if you haven't seen that, I would definitely go on to Facebook and look that one up too. It was yeah, the Ronald that, McDonald I one. I just wanted to use our heart template and I wanted it to each one of those to stand out. So if you look at and the And she started it with an M Martelli M and she ended it with a McDonald M. It was just, it just, again, yeah. that creativity of seeing yeah. something that... That you, was cool because the guys had to make a special template <laughs> of the M's for me. I already had the Martelli M. I didn't have the McDonald <laughs> M, so I had to have a special template for just for that. And there's a picture of me. Yep, with the cake boss. <laughs> there he is. I think it's, it's uh, Mario. Uh -huh. is his name and he's the brother-in-law of the cake boss i think the what's his name do you even know i don't even know buddy uh, buddy, buddy. 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 Yeah. yep that's his brother-in-law and we met him in paducah and he just said he didn't have a quilt and i thought well that's sad everybody should have a quilt so everybody pitched in and they yeah, they was, made him a quilt one for his dog so, so. guess what, tell him what he did after that he advertised that we make quilts <laughs> So I didn't ask anything in return for him. I mean, you know, and I'm sure when you're in a celebrity status like that, you know, when you do things for people, they're always like, well, I got to do something for you. Well, I didn't ask him. He gave me his cell phone number. I talked to him a couple times on his cell phone. He probably thought, yeah, because it took me a minute to get it together. And I uh -huh. just said, when I got it, I said, where would you like me to send it? And they did this beautiful video and they put it on their Facebook. It was awesome. And they said, if you want anything, you want anything like this, this is beautiful. You called the Martellis. And I'm thinking, no, 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 no. We don't make quilts. We don't make quilts. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. We help you make your own quilt. <laughs> so that was funny when he put it out there. I thought, oh, Lord, we got all these phone calls. Hey, can you make me a quilt? I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't think Lisa has time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just that one there. That's just on the design wall. That's not the finished That's not. Quilt. Nope, that's, that's not, not even not the, the finished, finished one. Quilt. And I don't know yep. if I sent Zeke the finished one or not. I may not have. Okay. Again, go back to the Facebook yep. and go you'll to the photos it. and you'll see yeah. you'll it's see there. all that. And mention the one with the oh, dog. There is the one that we gave to the police officer. The, the one that was the catalog cover with the little dog. Mention that's great. That was great. Greg. No, I did. Greg. He's yeah, did the Greg little dog. He's one. a second row from up okay. from the bottom. I got, I got to tell a story about that dog, though. Okay. <laughs> he brought it in, and um, he had his name embroidered on the hat. Remember? Oh it yeah. It was supposed yeah. to be. It was supposed to be biscotti. I can't remember what name he. He had a different name on there. It wasn't biscotti. Uh, it was something else. I can't remember. I can't. But remember, I do remember. But that. I know that it took me like five hours very carefully to pick out that name because <laughs> he thought we were going to just throw it away because it was the wrong name. Nope. I literally, with my magnifying glasses and a bright light, I didn't even very know that. carefully, I didn't know you did that. five hours of thread by thread picking out that embroidered name because it was wrong. <laughs> what are those things you eat? The Italian things we had them out there for the retreat? Biscottis. Biscottis? Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't Biscotti. He had another name on I can't there. Remember. Well, Greg, if you're and on there, let us know. I, I can't remember what it was, but I worked hard for hours and hours and hours one evening, just slowly, one thread at a time, because I didn't want to destroy it. I just wanted to get that name off. And I did it. This quilt. That's uh -huh. the quilt. So I wanted you to see, <clears throat> there's all the signatures. And, 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 you know, you only had so many, and I wanted to have a layout that it would have a continuous look to it. I wanted, I'm, that's a little bit OCD. I, I have to have that, that continuity there. But I kept thinking about the thin blue line. Mm -hmm. And I had that panel that was the, that flag that had that thin blue line. And so 
how I designed these blocks that was I went ahead and carried that thin blue line through the blocks and I wanted to make sure it was all set center just like it is for the flag. So there's not a fabric for that. There was not a block for that or a pattern for that. I wanted that thin blue line to be continuous throughout the entire quilt. So that's how that one came about. We it's even more meaningful because when we did that, he was still alive. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. been gone for about a year now, he so that was a very special saw us. We were there. Mm -hmm. we, he showed up at the precinct. He had a big there. party. He came back to work, actually, and yep. the first day back to work, they had invited Lisa and I. Um, I'm a police officer, as you guys know, so I was able to get in contact with the chief there, and they were able to set up a time for me to go down there and Lisa to go down there, and Lisa yeah. was actually able to present it to him. So. It was that, that was, was very hard. special. Yeah, that was a very nice day. So we got some great comments. In response to the, we don't make quilts, Heather said, we make quilters. <laughs> there you go. I didn't think cool we make quilters. We do. Yeah. You are 100% yeah. right. And then uh, Shirley said, I won't sell you a quilt, but I will give you one if I love you, per Marion Fawns. Marion Fawns, a Fawns supporter. Absolutely. Oh, so so yeah. you guys yeah. all know yeah. where we're coming from. Yep. This yep. is not a, we just sell quilts. It's meaningful. And, you know, the thing is, is he was very, Mario was very generous, and he was very excited. It had his mother in it, and he's very, fam Italians, I think, are very family-oriented. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he, you can tell when he did that video how much he appreciated it. He just wanted to help us so much. He yeah. just didn't understand <laughs> what we do but so. it is dog they were just so tickled that their dog got a quilt oh, too yeah. you'll have to watch the video it was super super cute yep yep mm. all right this here is not my quilt but this is um somebody had made this quilt for you but if you look at that block that is gail's waltz right there look how is cool it? that is that's gail's waltz oh my god you must have sent that yep, to me though yep, yep i think so but somebody had brought that in. But how oh cool is that? Gosh, the Gales Waltz is figured. just a beautiful, yeah. beautiful template. You just don't even know how, how, how many variations that there are that you can do with that. It's just I'll three pieces. I'll post a link. And, you know, we were talking about we were making all these papers, you know, and somebody suggested, well, we ought to make uh, for the So Much Therapy plan book. Uh -huh. We really should do a Gales Waltz and a Burke's Beauty Block. layout. So that yep. they can color I, that in. I think that Zeke would be perfect. If Zeke doesn't kill us and he's not too busy in the future, we can do that as an add-on buy because yeah, I yeah, think I that's think a great idea. That needs to be because those are, you know, very unique blocks that we have. So, all right, where are we? What do you want to talk about next? All right, we're going to switch the picture real quick and then let's see what is next because I don't know how many exactly I sent him. So let's see this one. This oh, is one of my favorites. So let's talk about this one. Okay, so pumpkins. If you, if anybody who knows me knows that I am, uh, fall is probably my favorite season of all. I, I absolutely love fall. And um, used to be that I always wouldn't go, I like taking little vacations by myself once a year. Of course, I have my family and we'd go together, but in the fall, I'd love to go to upstate New York or go to Ohio because we don't have fall colors down here. Maybe or Christmas around, lights. Maybe around <laughs> December. But we don't have the beautiful, vibrant fall colors. I grew up with in fall. I love, love fall. Hate it that it only lasts a short time. So pumpkins were all the rage a couple of years ago. Everybody was all They're about all the They're all the rage. I mean, they, that, they still it, that are. screams the fall. Mm -hmm. I that mean, without fall. pumpkins, there is no fall. So I mean. first thing we designed was we designed just a simple, you know, template. I think this was probably one of the first templates that I had a part in designing mm -hmm. okay. that was um, different sizes. So we had the different you know, the, just the simple shapes to make the three different size pumpkins. But I'm just going to tell you, she sees in threes. Uh -huh. I don't I, care I if do. you make a template, just go ahead and make three sizes. <laughs> because as soon as the first one, she's going to say, I think we could do this bigger. That's, that's Lisa's <laughs> thing. Three seems to be the number. Yeah, threes. But it also had where this, what I loved about this template was because I could have just used two pieces and I have this short squatty pumpkin. I could do three pieces and I got this bigger one or I could do all the pieces and I got a bigger, wider pumpkin. So how I love this, this template was because this single set could give you so many different sizes of pumpkins. We didn't Now look at that picture and tell me what else you could make besides a pumpkin. Well, oh Lord. <laughs> There you go. So, you know, there, there well, oh my goodness, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you're like spouting spot. it off. Oh, I see. You know Jack what I see? I, I, I see. Well, see, here's this elliptical thing, and I could do something with this, and then I'm looking at this shape here, and that's a crescent moon, and, and I just, I see so many more things that I can do do with this simple template. What, Zeke? Zeke's I, to get. 
I've got the Gail's Waltz banner uh, queued up if you want us to take a okay. look at it. Yeah, let's. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he was busy. Look at that. There look at, you go. See, I love the Gail's Waltz because I loved those And colors. that is the same block. That's Gail's Waltz. Mm -hmm. That is the exact same block made in different different ways. Yep, Gail's Waltz is absolutely and a Zeke, gorgeous block. If you could, and I know this is, I didn't send this to you and I should have, but that video from Mario on our Facebook, if you can't, that's fine. But if you do see it, will you snag it? All right. Okay. So no this pressure. Is, so anyways, Burke's Beauty, there's, and that's Gail's Waltz. And, you know, and Gail's one of our favorite, too. Mm -hmm. She's a customer who's become like family. Matter of fact, uh, she hasn't been in her a while. I did talk to her a couple of days ago, checked in on her. But her mind is just crazy. Yeah, yeah. She's, crazy. Got, she's got couples that she's we've kind of been given. And it, one of them just blows my mind. It's called the Baker's Dozen. <laughs> We haven't done that one yet, but that will blow your mind. It's, it's beautiful. I, that one blows my mind. I haven't had a chance to wrap my mind around it because Gail's awesome like that. So pumpkins. So started off, we were making all kinds of pumpkins, crescent moons, apples. I can see all kinds of different projects table with runners. it. Table runners. This is a super, super long table runner with all the different. Hold it up a um, little bit so you can see it. It just goes on and on and on. Big, massive, long table runner. So, I mean, and then I didn't put a template for the stem because I figured let your imagination run. But we also put the leaf templates in there. And get this, she had these boxes and boxes and boxes of all these leaf templates that she, I don't know where they came from. But I helped her get rid of them because <laughs> she had all these I think boxes. somebody had an idea and <laughs> didn't know what to do with that idea. So we had them all and they just didn't. I, I want you to see that and this is another one of those versatile templates that I see so much more than a leaf. I see a partridge. Can you see, can you see the partridge? That's a bird, the, that partridge bird. But I also see a snail. I can put a circle right here, and now I've got a snail. Well, I'm gonna turn it around this way. So if I had a big circle here, he's a snail, he could be a snail that's facing this way, or he could be a snail that's kind of got it that's raised up. I just see more things than what this is. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I know I can't be the only one. So from these pumpkins, okay, she so saw. We started thinking, well, how do I make those pumpkins dimensional? Make them big and pretty. So what I love is one template wonders. I do. I, if I can get one template to make a whole thing, that's awesome. So this one template, this one, makes this one. How, how cute. You're just basically cutting out two, four, six, eight, ten, you know, however many that you <laughs> want. And then you're just sewing them all together. You got your medium, you got your big boy. Then and why, why do pumpkins have to be um, orange? orange. orange. They, you know, I thought this was gorgeous for around the holiday season. And we talked so, about that, yeah, and I would like to do a whole show on, on color uh -huh. um, because that is very important. Um, so colors are important, and Lisa just has that eye for the color as well. But how cute are those? And we got a video on this one. So this is right there under the creating with Martelli. Linda did that. So, so that... I have to have threes. Because bring those over here again real quick. Threes. Put those everything out here because I want everybody threes. to see those and how cute what, those are. Yeah, I know these are one of your favorites. and so. Oh, I got so many of them here. <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing the video. And this is just, just fall. This, okay, this was just an old poinsettia that was falling apart. It was really shredding. So I thought it would look really cute to just cut it up and make it the, like the little leaves for the pumpkin. So we just kept... You can make them taller, you can make them short and squatty, you can add more blades to it. You know, pumpkins are never identical, so we're, we're just scrolling them all down. And then I had a unique way to do the, uh, the stem. And in the video, it's, it's in there. So I'm just sliding down the bow. This was the very first one that I had made when I was trying to figure it out. And we don't, we don't even have a template that makes it this small. This was my very first one just trying to figure out Again, how Again, it's a pumpkin. process. And you can see, mm -hmm. look at not much work done to this one as compared to the elaborate of the... Okay, so that was... So we've talked about... Oh, you want... So this here, talk oh, yeah. a little bit about that. All right, so this one here, we were showcasing the Lemoyne Star. That was the main focus of this panel. This was the very last one that we did with Houston before you know they, they the weren't pandemic. open. Yeah, before the pandemic. And the the again, 
you're going to see, do you see that colorway that's in that background? Well, it's very similar to the colorway that's in the So Much Therapy quilt, where we took a color, orange and yellow, and then yellow and orange, you know, yellow and red, and then green and yellow, and then, you know, we just kind of had it where it bled over to the next thing. The main thing that we wanted when we did this was that three blocks, which you can see we got the top, medium, and the bottom. You had to have three blocks that was truly Lemoyne Star done with the color fabrics that you were given, mm -hmm. and everybody was given the same gray background fabric. Then the two other blocks that was in between the Lemoyne Stars was whatever you wanted, wanted to, be. to be. It could be whatever design, whatever pattern, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to use our templates, not use our templates, it didn't matter. Whatever design you wanted to be. But we were Pacific on what size that block needed to be, mm -hmm what size that whole panel needed to be from top to bottom, which was big, 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 because we were stitching them all together and everything was And we made ready. it a little contest mm -hmm. and yep. there were winners Just and like we had that. people vote on them. And so it was, mm -hmm. you know, the most unique and we're going to get back to that. So I, I do now that so, the pandemic is yep. slowed down a little bit. We're going to, now that Lisa's in, we're going to get stuff. back to doing the get fun to, stuff. Do the fun stuff. Okay. So this was um, the very first big, big quilt that I think I made for the storefront. Mm -hmm. um, this was a fabric line that had just come in. Uh, it was a Moda Ombre Dot. And this pattern is not my pattern. Um, I, I, wanna, I, th I, wanna, I think it's called Brickyard, but what I had done different was in place of the white, where you see where all the gold triangle, the gold mm -hmm. squares are, she had white in those spots. It was a covered corner, white spots. It's a simple, simple jelly roll strip. So I wanted to give it, I wanted to focus on the gold that was in the And dots. I saw that so quilt, I made that doesn't do it justice. Uh -uh, no, that quilt is actually, it might be, it might be here. But um, that one actually, I got that one made so it, hang, it hung in the storefront. Mm -hmm. um, it was the, when we, our grand opening of our new storefront and that was hanging in the front, front door right there. So that one was a lot of fun. I wanted to focus on the gold, pull out the gold. Sometimes fabrics speak to you and what you want them to be. We got a next one, Zeke. Uh, looks like that's it. Okay. So what I didn't have a picture of, what oh, I really... Oh, I okay. Ah, well. uh, there we are. <laughs> Tasket baskets. Okay. So the Tasket basket, this is a good story. And I don't even know if Valerie knows the story on how they actually came to be. If I don't, I'll be surprised. Yeah, go here ahead. we go. So here we go. So it was, it was a year ago, or a year and a half, or two years ago. I don't know. A couple years ago. We were doing... Um, Remember, we were starting the Creating with Martelli series or something along that line. And um, Colby Walden was working with us at that time. And she was working with David. And that's and David's she was niece. David's niece. And she was kind of like his assistant. And at that time, they wanted uh, me to do more um, like a video a week or, you know, two, three. They wanted a, a project or a video a week. And we were trying to keep with the theme of the, you know, color scheme for the month. I mean, K Colby was very organized in that. And she was very, you know, she had ideas of how she wanted to do, build up the Instagram, the Pinterest and all that stuff. Um, she, we were, it was January, February. So she goes, we really would need to be thinking about Easter and I want you to make an Easter basket. I said, you want me to come up with an Easter basket? She goes, yep, you need to come up with an Easter basket. So I'm racking my brain trying to, I was drawing one out. I had several drawn out. But again, I always like to go look at our wall of templates just to see what I could see. And what I saw, I'm going to pull it out of the box because this was the inspiration for the Tasca basket. I walked over to the wall and here is just hanging there was Grandma's fan. I thought, huh, there's my basket right there. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely do not see a basket there. That, that, I saw the snail. Uh -huh. I saw the snail. Don't uh -huh. see the basket. That I saw, I saw my basket by by this shape right here. There, there's, there's, that's that this was This is, it. what is this template? This is Grandma's fan. This is the one that Maureen Welch had brought in, there you go. and she had made this quilt. We actually had her. Uh, we did a class. Um, I think it's on it's, it's on the um, our videos of the make of the Grandma's fan block. But that and actually this quilt actually is still downstairs because she hasn't come by and picked it up yet. But that's Grandma's fan. Mm -hmm. And that's what I saw for the Tasket Basket. So when I first drew it out and made my first one, see that one right there? I think it's, a, I think it's actually in here because that was my bobo. 
I, I hated that first. I think that was the that very first one. one you did, wasn't it? Yeah, I, and I hated it. <laughs> I didn't like the binding. I just thought the binding was just awful. Is that this one here? I think I did not me up. I did two of them. I did, did two with the with the binding, the large and the medium. And I just hated that binding. And I thought there's gotta be a better way. I hated that look of the binding. So work with it, tweaked it a little bit more, and that's where I came up with where I could stitch and flip it. But again, I was thinking about the process of how difficult it is to connect this here. You know, this can be very difficult for a lot of people if they don't know how to do it. And I did, I had it done on this one, but I was afraid that it might be something that would be too difficult. So that's why you see in the instructions, I just did it with a simple overlap here. And then you could just stitch it, stitch it here. So I know that's not as pretty, but I wanted it but to get be simple. But that also goes to, we are mm -hmm. videoing the basics, but those of you who are out there who know a little bit more are able to take it to that next level. Yeah, take it to the next level. I knew how to do it. And then Valerie had took it to the next level because then we were thinking, okay, save plastic, you know, make your own bag. So she, you know, we came out with the two sizes, which was this giant, giant size, which I just saw this as a great thing to put poinsettias in or put potted plants in or Christmas gifts in, or you could fill it with, you know, a nursery stuff, you know, baby showers. Baby showers. You I mean, diapers. I saw so much. I know it's kind of short and it's kind of squatty, but you could just load her up with all and kinds we'll, of things. And we'll talk about that real quick, mm -hmm. but we had the tree skirt template. We had to rename it. Yeah. Uh, because... You know, this was a Easter basket that turned into so much more. There, yeah, it was. It was just gifts for baby showers, wedding gifts. This. So, you know, we had to name it the task basket. You can't just call it an Easter basket. An Easter so basket. again, there's not one use. There's so many uses. So for that's these. why we came out with the two sizes. We had just the two sizes: the big one, which was same height, just a larger handle and a larger um, bottom. Now, do you see it? Now, now do you see the grandma's fan? Yep. And I just extended it and added the cutout. And I think this was where we first, very first started using this design right here yep. so that you could have boxed corners. We had never done that before. Before, it was always, if you wanted to box your corners, you had to do it the old fashioned way, pull it apart, hope you got it even, lined up just right, cut it, sew it, cut it, get just right and that that template to me was revolutionary for making our box corners that was our very first one box corners because we came out with the technology of having the cut marks the cut marks and that technology of the cut marks came from the star so we do things that comes with the star it came with the star it evolves yep then and we have to go back and fix all the other ones that we did prior yep so we <laughs> see something that works and then because we learned something from that, it's something now, now it expanded and grew. the horizon of other things that we could do that? now that we have cut marks. The smaller templates. And this was a request from David um, from his online group that came in. Yeah, that they asked for a smaller later, one. Two years later, two years later, somebody mm -hmm. wants a small one. And how cute, what, so the first thing we did was, we did this one. I think this one was 70% smaller. But they wanted a 50% smaller, and I thought, are you kidding me? 50% smaller? That's so small. Yeah. And I got it in here. There it is. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so tiny, but once we made it, how adorable is that? But again, a, a, cute. a baby shower gift, you put bottles in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It could be a wedding gift you put in there. So I don't know who it was that requested it, but... Somebody on David's group Somebody's and David David's had requested group. it. So yep. it, 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 that's how this design, you know, I, I think I reduced the one by 30 And I want, definitely want to, he had the trillium up there, but I definitely want to get to the stockings. That's one of my favorites, but that's we'll talk about this trillium real quick. Oh, yeah, and then your bright idea to stiffen the bottom. In the bottom. So yeah, if you don't put the foam school. in those tasket baskets, here you can use this as a template to cut something hard, either the corrugated... Um, paper mm -hmm. to put hard on the bottom or you can buy as many as you want to put on the bottom so if you go grocery shopping you can wrap them all up really tight but when you grocery shop you need that that little bit of stability on the bottom for cans stuff like mm -hmm. that so but you just make a single layer mm -hmm. I think I even did a video on how to show it where you didn't even have to have the bottom Linda, seam at all trillium? 
and you could just drop that plastic in there and just roll them up and set them in the trunk of your car and just pull them out. So it went really easy. Trillium. Uh, look in the drawer. Look in one of the baskets. I don't even think I have now, that. Now, where did that come here. from? I saw something similar, but I tweaked it and made it mine. I just, again, I was looking at that triangle. I was looking at a triangle and seeing how I can split that into three pieces. So I had my center dot and I just drew out the lines from the center dot. I divided a circle or a triangle, an equal lateral, that's what it's called, right, Zeke? Equal lateral, th all three sides are the same. Yeah. So I took a three, 60 degree equal lateral triangle, found the center point by going from the center of an edge to a point, center of an edge to a point, and that's how I came up with that shape. And I saw another, I love those one and done templates. One template, <laughs> you can make it. And I, we were working on doing some projects with the YC, which was the Lemoyne Star. So if it wouldn't been for the Lemoyne Star, I wouldn't have been able to see something like this because the Lemoyne Star has that Y seam, which is so difficult. Well, it's not difficult. It's just a tough first time Y seam. This is a Y seam, but it's so simple. It's a, it, it just made it e easier. So and that's we did I that as from. part of the retreat. It mm -hmm. is on the website, and I, I think you've done a video on it. I don't think we've yeah. got the written directions, but. It, in one of the baskets, there's um, the samples in there. Now but this I'm is, let's go just move on to this okay. one. I don't think I have a picture for this one, Zeke, but this has got to be one of my favorites, I think. The stockings? Um, Yep, and a customer. Do you remember the customer's name who brought in the? Um, oh, this is. I'll oh, show this, this real quick. This is yeah. This is the one I have. And you've all have again. And imagine all this, this in a one. quilt. You know, this is a finished piece. But imagine this in the. You, you know, you sew them all together and bigger. expand it. And, and Zeke we, had a table runner made and. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, got got, he took them home yes or Saturday. And some coasters. Because <laughs> the retreat yeah, was over. So you could do so much with that one template and expand it out. So there was a customer who brought in a mermaid. Stocking, and I know it was stocking. a little bit different. Do you remember it who was, that was? Yeah. I, so it was Beth. Beth. There we go. Beth. Beth brought in a mermaid stocking, and I thought, oh, how cute. Now, it was shaped a little bit differently. Um, but so again, she, you yeah. got to think of cut lines. When we're doing things, you... Uh, it you, was, yeah, it was not something that was easy to be used with a rotary cutter or design with our templates. It was, a, it was difficult, mm -hmm. and... And she had real fancy fabrics on it, and it was, it was actually studying. I thought, well, man. Well, everything Beth does so, is exquisite. Yeah, but, and mm. it was. And the thing is, at this time, when I first came out with it, mermaids and baby shark <laughs> was everywhere. Well, I think everywhere. they're still pretty popular. They're, they're still very popular, but they were really super big popular. But I also had a, grand, a grandson at the time, so it was, it was all about that, that. So this is where I literally took a piece of paper, my big, huge poster paper, and I started drawing. So I drew out my mermaid tail. This is the first one. Hate it. <laughs> I hated this. It just didn't lay the way I wanted it to be. So this was Bobo One. And it um, has a little bit of foam to make the but, tail stiff. Yep, we were, that was learning about foam at that time. <laughs> And I saw how you can really add dimension with foam. And, um, and of course, I had discovered Fairy Frost, and I love Fairy Frost fabric. So this was my very first one, but I didn't like how it hung. And even no matter which way I put it, I didn't like how the tail didn't, it just didn't have the right curvature to it. So even so, if something looks nice, yep. it's got to hang right. And so we had to redraw it. Went back to the board, and and um, that's where you see the version that you're. And I actually have that one that he's showing. When I redrew it and gave it, I call it, I made her a little more sexier. <laughs> She's got a little more curves to her, and I like how the tail came down a little bit more, so it didn't look like it was flopping over. And this was this was the version that I, that I came up with. So I just fell in love with this. I just think this is just the. Best Elegant. little stocking for little girls, yep. You could dud it up, you could really put some bling to it, you could put like chains going on it. The pearl was um, so that you could do their name, or you could have this where it's th hanging off of the, um, off the, the tag, but this was extremely easy to make. I mean, I can't even tell you how easy it is to make. And if you're one lurk worth foam for the very first time, there you and go. And you did a video on this mm -hmm. one as well, did didn't you? did a video on this one. Well, I couldn't have 
just little girls getting a stocking. So that's where the shark came from. So here it's designed pretty much exact same way. And I have not seen any shark um, stockings that look like this one. I think this was just so much fun. So, so much fun to make this one. So this was the shark. And I, of course, I've done it in several different colorways to make it look like mm -hmm. a shark. And they're adorable. Uh huh. And then, how about for the boys that just loves to go fishing? So I also made, you know, just a bass fish. You know, I think at that time we were doing a boys, lot of Boys, you think the, of yeah. husbands that like to yep. fish. So and fishing, we do live in Florida. And, and we had this fabric came in that was just perfect for the dorsal fin. And again, and we, we didn't even talk about that today. And I know we're almost out of time, but I mean, we didn't even talk about fabrics make these. You talk about you love this fabric. I mean, how cool is that fabric? Yeah, I mean, I don't like think it looks as cool without the right oh, fabric. And you yeah, just have like this eye, range. not just to see a template and for what it's worth, but also what fabrics you should use for it. So these were probably some of the biggest templates that, that I had designed was this one right here. And I had a lot of plastic to it. And I have to wonder, could we cut this one in half? Could no. we have cut that it's one not, in half? It's not symmetrical. It's not symmetrical. Mm -hmm. I don't, the body might be. Was this before we decided the, we could cut it in half? Before we started doing it in halves, <laughs> yeah. The body possibly could be, the, the mermaid, no. The mermaid cannot be cut in half at all but we did the tail where you only have to half the tail you have to you can make two but it just it's hard when you're dealing with foam to fold in half that might have been what we were thinking because if you were mm -hmm. filling with foam on all on any of these now, i know we we're running low on time but i wanted to make sure we're answering questions because that's an important part of this is so for this you guys all of them i think we've gone through right okay this is the last picture so we'll well this was my last picture so okay so this was um you had gotten this pattern right that you yeah. hated <laughs> i did i wasn't a big fan of it and valerie just said here's the fabric here's the kit go make it and she's well, like i don't like that hat and that looks dumb, i hated i hated and i can yeah. make it look better so she took our top hat mm -hmm. for I took our top hat, which was our St. Patrick's Day. That you top did? Hat. Yeah, because I didn't, it had this funky little bitty tiny hat that was on it. And I thought, this is, this, it, it's just too small for this head. Mm -hmm. So I pulled out our top hat, and I knew our top hat would look so much better on that, on that snowman. So that's no, how that one came to be. Then I fell in love with the pattern, because it's mm -hmm. just a simple log cabin. It was just, We'll probably bring that one back for the uh, for Christmas too as well. So yeah, you'll probably yeah. be seeing that here in the future because we got it out kind of late last year. Not everybody got it, so we will be bringing that one back out. And we sold it as a kit too. And I want to make sure everybody start putting in your questions. I'm going to let Linda catch up a little bit, and then I'm going to have Lisa also go over this. We introduced this to the retreaters <laughs> last week, but um, I'm going to let her introduce this because I know we're getting low on time. So I want her to talk about this as well. Um, I don't know if you know the back story on this, uh, but Zeke, everything. Oh, I, I just, I didn't know if you wanted to let uh, Linda ask me questions. Do we oh. have? It's, oh, do you I got a question? Go ahead and yeah, I was going to have people start asking yeah. so well, that. Ask the question first, Zeke. Go uh, ahead and Linda. get them typed we in so when have, she's done. Yeah, go ahead and type in your questions if you have any particular questions for Lisa. I only yeah. have one that you haven't answered yet. Yeah, okay, so go ahead fine. and give them a minute to type their questions in. Okay. All right, so this here, um, I don't know. Did they know the whole backstory? Was this something we're we out to the about? public now? This was okay, in the retreat, so, this, okay. so you can go so ahead. The retreaters the may be story. hearing this for a second time, but that's okay. So I'm all about. I'm old school. I'm still, you know. I know there's programs out there that helps you design blocks, quilts, and all that stuff, and I actually have them. But I still like pen to paper. I still like drawing everything out and seeing how it looks. And my, I can wrap my mind around things a little bit better if I have it in paper and pencil in front of me. And I was working on a quilt. We're testing out another template. It's not here yet. Uh, but I needed to see it in, I needed to visualize the color scheme because I could see it in my head, but I couldn't wrap my head around it, how it varied out. Well, I said, hey, Zeke, I need some graph paper. Do you happen to have any graph paper? Because I have a graph paper notebook at home. I just didn't have it here. He goes, well, I could probably, I don't have any, but I could print you out some. I can, I'm, no, he said, I can print you out a piece. I, I can go to the internet. Just, I, just, I just need one piece of graph paper so I can draw this out. He said, no problem. Give me a second. I'll just go online and I'll just print you out one. The boy wasn't gone <laughs> five, ten minutes, maybe. He, 
he could tell this part better because he comes out with this notebook. This big notebook has my name written on it. Lisa's quilt and design book. Quilt, block, and design book. I've written on it. Open this big notebook. Up. Here's all these pages of this half inch graph paper. And I'm like, holy, he didn't have it down for a second. I had my crayons out and I was already coloring in it because I had this idea I had to wrap around my brain. So he had made this in about 10 minutes and Linda was with us. She goes, well, I waited very nicely she did, for she quite did. a while. She and then I said, what about me? <laughs> she, she did, she did. And not only did he go back and make her one, but he made a second one for me because it's so big. He wanted me to have one at home too. So I have one at home, I have one here. And then in the process of all this talk, we decided to not only not have this huge one, which is just phenomenal, but we also have a smaller travel one. So then, but anyway, but it started off with just this book. So then Valerie comes up, it was probably a couple days later that Valerie had come upstairs and um, I just started bragging about this awesome book. And I'd already had several pages colored of different blocks and different designs that I was working on. Of course, she sees something totally different. If I love this, if Linda loves this, she saw that this might be something that you would love to because I love to draw out my designs and we took this a step further. You can get, you know, graph paper. And I think Zeke's like got this. in the box up here where you can see the different designs that this book has. Yeah. But you can Because get you did that and these. they were like, hey, do this. And then somebody's like, hey, do that. And again, it, it evolves. The yeah, ideas. it evolves. And then we we're talking about putting in, um, selling maybe the Burke's Beauty and, and the, the Gail's um, Waltz and the Gail's Waltz Waltz. at a different time. Yep. Yeah, because I know that I couldn't find on point squares graph paper. I can't find 60 degree triangle or 30 degree triangle or a hexagon or half hexy graph paper that I could draw out and design a block or a quilt or any layout that I want to work on. I would have to literally draw those out myself and hope I get the colors right. This has it all in there. It has all these different designs and I know there are so many more designs out there, but this is just seven. We've given you seven, you get three, five pages of each one. <clears throat> then we took it a step further and I thought, you know, we wanted to add more to the book. Well, I found this great little book called No Math Quilt Charts and Formula. So it has all, everything that you would need to figure out in here, like how many how many triangles will you be able to cut from a yardage or how many squares per fat quarter or a full quarter or a half yard? How, you know, all, all these formulas in here, including And we had talked about, hey, we need backings. to go find all this information yeah. and put a copy in here. And yeah. Lisa's like, hey, here's one book that has it all. Has I was it, like, oh, has, well, let's do that then. It makes it a little easier. <laughs> because when I'm figuring out my squares and I'm figuring out my colors, you know, I'm counting, okay, I have this many reds, this many blues, so I can take a look at that and say, okay, how much yardage am I going to need? So I don't have to overbuy or have too much of it, you know, so it's going to be all in here. So that's what I really liked about the book. And, and I don't so, know about you guys, but um, so much therapy came to me just because when we were talking about the name. I've been in the industry for 20 years. Yeah. And to me, the stories that I hear when we're on the road that I have heard Houston for 20 years, to. it always goes back to it's some form of therapy. It's always. It's, in. Yeah. And if it's not therapy that you need, it's therapy you didn't know you needed. Um, and it keeps you sane. Yep, and so sure. also we've included a pattern with this book, as you can see, here's your pattern. There's the pattern for the so much therapy. <laughs> so this right quilt there. was made by Lisa, but this is actually the pattern. So if you were doing two inch blocks or three inch mm -hmm. blocks, this would be your pattern where you could make this beautiful quilt. I literally had drawn like that out did. with pencil. I didn't have my colored pencils at that time when I drew it out, but I already knew I wanted to be red to yellow, yellow to green, green to blue. I mean, I wanted to just have that rainbow rolling all the way across. So that's how that worked out. Uh, so Zeke, I said, so Zeke, many. can you make the colors flow? And he said, yeah, I can do that. So Zeke did this and yep. next weekend I said, well, we're going to launch the show. We've been talking about it for three months and I've gotten everything ready that I could possibly so get ready. This is Zeke's. Zeke did this. All I asked for was one piece of paper mm -hmm. that was graph. That's all I needed. <laughs> and again, it's not always the quilters. When uh -huh. you talk as a team, you design as a team, mm -hmm. and you know David will attest to that. You know when he's out there talking to people, and or Brian's at a show, or Joe Allen's at a show, 
they tell you things and you know it's a collective it's never when something comes to market it's never one person it's no absolutely there not. might be it one takes... lead person like zeke was the lead on this mm -hmm. but it's usually a team effort for sure yeah absolutely for sure so was there any questions and i'm sorry we went over i'm going to try to keep these to about an hour oh, no longer than an hour and a half um so let us know if you're enjoying it too much, too little, and uh, hopefully we'll get better well, as time goes. A little about what I do. I come up with ideas. I see ideas. Somebody says something to me. Could you design this? Could you do this? And and I start creating. And this was just an episode to yeah. show you how her mind works. The Lisa will be on more, and we will do more specific projects. So instead of throwing 15 projects at you, we may mm -hmm. be doing a so much therapy episode where we're doing one project. And this is my therapy. It's a job. It's. it's I have a hard time calling this a job. Because it's so much fun. I enjoy everything that I do. I, you know, I finally found something. You know, we're always supposed to find that one thing that we're happy to do. And it's that's your therapy it. with stress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is it. yeah it is. Therapy so, with stress. Yeah, yep, so this sure. has just truly been therapy for me. All right, so we've got a couple comments and then a couple questions, too. Of course, we've got lots of shout-outs for Zeke. You know about how talented. Oh, I, talented I know in the he retreat is. he got like 50 million hearts, and I was like, I don't even get that. <laughs> and I then like somebody the somebody asked about the cost. I'm going to put a link to the website. So okay. instead of talking about the cost here for the um, it is the discounted this week. It was discounted for the retreat, and it will be discounted for this group for a week. So if you go on and buy it, is it is already got the discount applied. So it is yeah. on sale for this week. And then we had two questions. Roxanne Perez first asked, "How long has Lisa been sewing?" And then Carolyn Erie said, what is your favorite thing to create? Quilts, things that are purposeful, you know, <laughs> kind of question. the, yeah. So those two questions for you. And then I'm going to post a link for the right, book. So Roxanne asked that me That goes back long. to, we forgot about Miss Shirley who asked, which is your favorite project you've ever made? My favorite project yeah. that what? I've made, ever made. I think it was template, your favorite template well, that you created. Well, my favorite project that I think I enjoyed, really enjoyed, I, I enjoyed making the Ronald McDonald quilt. I, that one was. I love that quilt, and that then, and that beautiful. one I made for your mom, that big giant Lone Star. That would, my project. Oh, we didn't even talk about templates. Lone Stars. The, yeah, yeah, the templates. Um, the tasket baskets so the the mermaid stocking was, the, but the one that's kind of really dear to my heart. And I know it, it, it's just that. that it's hard that, to pick a baby. It's that, like choosing one of your I kids. I love that flopsy hat. I, I the bell hat. I love that bell hat. You know that one has a sentimental meaning to it, but. All of them, I, you know, they're almost like my babies. They're my children. I enjoy making them and moving on to the next thing and moving on to the next thing. It's hard thing. to choose. Right now, the frog's going to be my favorite. You know, I just, <laughs> I just move on to the next thing. I enjoy it making It depends which one's my favorite child, Jessica, Stephanie, whichever <laughs> one's giving me the hardest <laughs> time. The then the other ones, my husband jokes and says, you're not my favorite anymore. You're not mm -hmm. my favorite anymore. So whenever somebody does something bad, he says, you're not my favorite anymore. And then when they do something good, they're like, oh, you're my favorite. So it's hard to choose, just like mm -hmm. kids, hard to choose which one. Like taking a template that's existed. And that how long ever used. have you been sewing? Oh my goodness, probably since I was in elementary school, seven, eight, when my mom put me in 4-H. I think that's when I started learning how to sew. I had a old singer and I remember I used a knee bar. I couldn't reach the pedal, so we had a, I had a knee bar. Now to make it more interesting is my mom was a sewer. She grew up, she knew how to sew and she wasn't big on quilting, but she made all of our clothes. She liked to dress all of us girls the same. But my grandpa on my dad's side, um, he owned an upholstery business and a sewing machine repair. He for any of you repair, out there, so we always had the best sewing machines. We are gonna be doing a kids class and there's a machine that we're they're gonna be doing a class mm -hmm. at the end of the month this month. Um, so if you have grandkids and you wanna pass that on down there's a great machine, so I'll be looking for that yep. in the uh, retreats and classes, too, because we're going to be doing, I think, and Linda's going to be doing a lot of, on hers will be a lot about getting kids involved, you know, getting them in, because that's Linda's big thing is, you know, she's a special ed teacher. I don't know if any of you knew that, but she'll be telling her story when she comes on. But, yep. you know, getting those kids in there young. Yeah, that but it was my Burnell Loft Ball. My, my grandpa had that upholstery <clears throat> shop in my hometown, and everybody, and he repaired the sewing machines. <laughs> So my mom always had a nice sewing machine because grandpa would service it. So that was, I grew up on using a singer that had the knee bar to move the pedals and that's You know, I and, and I think that's a love that's built in a young age. I'm, I don't sew, you know, if I'm gonna tell the truth here, I don't sew. I don't, I don't think I, I ever, I, was a kid. <laughs> I don't think I ever will sew, but my grandmother did. I did make a pillow when I was in um, home ec and um, I did crochet at a young age with my grandmother. My grandmother taught me a lot of things. Um, I'm a little obsessive compulsive, so when I do crochet, I don't stop till three or four.
o'clock in the morning, my husband's like, stop. So I don't do that very often, but um, it's something I think you learn mostly from your grandmother. Sometimes your mom passes it down, but I seem to find in the 20 years that I've been in it and say, who taught you? It's always a grandmother. I don't know if it skips a generation or what, but grandmothers are usually, probably because you're more patient. You know, as a mother, I don't think you're patient when they're young. It's yeah. like you want to kill them. Mom was sewing and she was into ceramics and she was artsy. My grandma, she was big crocheter. My aunts and uncles, uh, aunts was crocheters and sewers and great grandparents were the quilters. Grandma wasn't so much as, uh, much as my great grandparents were more of the quilters and sewers. So yeah, it could have skipped, but and everybody Always out there knows like if you've that. got a quilt from your grandmother, you're, especially since we haven't, yeah. uh, our audience is a little bit older. If you've got a quilt from your grandmother, those are very valuable and sacred and very precious to us for well, sure. Let me tell you, you know, my family on my mama's side is, you know, from Tennessee, hillbilly, hillbilly. So when they made quilts, it wasn't just for the prettiness of it. They made those quilts because they were a necessity. Yeah. So it was a, you know, pe we, we understand the value of them now. They've come a long way. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And those hand done ones are mm -hmm. very valuable. Yeah. So I think if there's no more questions, Linda, we're going to okay. wrap it up. I think and... I answered both of them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So um, again, be looking at that calendar and um, yeah. checking it out, I hope, because we're not going to be the same time every week. It'll be different times. We have different teachers, different educators coming into town. So we didn't want to lock into one day, one time. So look at that calendar and be watching for it. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. If there's something we can a do a little bit better or something that you want to see us at or something that you want to see a show about, please feel free to go ahead and why don't you give me your email address. Oh, it's learn at martellinotions.com. Pretty simple. Learn at martellinotions.com. And now you know why Lisa and Linda are running the education department because that's what they do. So reach out to them if there's anything you can have any ideas, anything you want to be involved with. Um, let us know and give us some feedback. We'd greatly appreciate that. All right, so we're off to make something else. All right, Zeke, I think that's a wrap.